Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us today. Our guest in studio is Dr. Dan Sperling, Medical Director of the Sperling Prostate Center, and he's here today to discuss focal laser ablation using the blue laser protocol for the treatment of prostate cancer. Welcome to the program, Dr. Sperling. Thank you very much, Neil. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you. Medical Director of the Sperling Prostate Center, how long has it been in existence? So we've been in existence since uh, 2009. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had gone into Europe to uh, to learn about some of the basic technology, and we've continued to grow and evolve to not just diagnosing uh, prostate tumors with MRI and biopsy, but to doing uh, treatment as well. Now, are you talking um, all types of treatment? So that's so we're actually working uh, mostly right now with prostate cancer. We're going into other areas. We fo- we specialize in treatments done inside the MRI machine which means the nice thing about an MRI is when you're doing uh, treatment, particularly with laser, which I use to treat uh, prostate tumors and without causing erectile dysfunctional incontinence, it's a very safe procedure. Uh, We do that inside the MRI so we can actually measure temperature change in real time. It's called MRI thermometry. Mm -hmm. So treatments in the MRI, the beauty of it is you can really uh, gauge and protect uh, sensitive structures and we're starting to apply it to other organ systems as well and different uh, devices. Uh, this MRI thermometry technology. You mentioned some erectile dysfunction and possibly incontinence issues. Is this something that is common with current technology that's in use for uh, detecting prostate cancer? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, most men who undergo um, um, surgery, radical prostatectomy, either done with the robotic uh, da Vinci device or done with the open, suffer some degree of incontinence and significant erectile dysfunction. Uh, and then people who undergo radiation, whether it be proton beams, cyberknife, or many different types of radiation, most of those patients also un- un- suffer from erectile dysfunction and incontinence. In addition, men undergoing uh, radiation may suffer from secondary cancers mm-hmm. caused by the ra- radiation of the rectum and bladder later in their lives. I'm assuming that maybe those are some of the reasons that PSA has come under fire. Yes, because what's happening is men are being diagnosed uh, with these uh, with, with uh, less uh, evolved technologies. They're finding lower grade cancers that really could be followed or treated with less aggressive therapies, and they're taking the, these sledgehammer approaches and really doing a lot of damage to the quality of men's lives, they're having radical impact on them. Um, the nice thing about the focal laser ablation is we've never had a case of someone developing erectile dysfunction or incontinence. It's very safe. It takes about an hour and a half to do. Uh, and people can go home the same day and go about and maintain a quality of life. Now, is this a service that um, is unique to the Sperling Prostate Center? So I'm the, I've done the most of these procedures in the world. Uh, there are some other sites that started after me. Uh, there were just a handful of them, uh, mostly doing clinical trials and, uh, and also investigating different versions of this. Um, but it is exciting, and it's a, very, has a, it's a very promising new technology and replacement eventually for the more aggressive therapies that have been, are still widely used today, unfortunately. Now, you mentioned being able to detect conditions that can simply be monitored and avoiding that, as you say, sledgehammer approach. Are you finding that this technique can also prevent the misdiagnosis in the first place, in addition to the over-treatment or unnecessary treatment? Yes. I mean, using the, our blue laser approach, we can, pick, we can decide, help people decide whether or not they should pursue treatment, to telling them if they have a tumor how aggressive it is, more accurately how aggressive the tumor is, and then uh, helping them pick out the best type of treatment. Um, Now, if they wanted to go on to surgery or radiation, your MRI still has a lot of utility for that. You can uh, do improved nerve sparing, you do a better surgery, you can do a better radiation uh, by you utilizing the MRI. And then ideally, if they're a candidate for something like focal laser ablation, uh, we can eradicate their tumor to accurately see where it is do it all inside the MRI and destroy it with the laser uh, fiber by ma- and maintain afterwards the quality of life. And their rec- the erections will be intact. They won't have any trouble with, uh, with urination. Uh, in fact, we're also using it for men who just have enlarged prostates and problems with urinating. We're able to use the laser to help those men uh, urinate normally again. What type of, uh, I guess, evaluation process is in place to determine whether or not the treatment was successful in both the short and the long term? So what we do is we do uh, the hour or so procedure of a laser. Uh, we ablate or, or heat up the tumor cells until they're destroyed, and we can see this all visually with the MRI. And while the patient is still in the MRI exam, we inject uh, a specialized uh, contrast medium, 
and we look for vascularity or blood flow. If there's no more blood flow to the area that we treated, we can confirm that we're successful. Of course, we do careful follow-ups, uh, usually three to six months. Uh, we look at the PSA and we do another MRI. We make sure that there's no residual tumor tissue at that time. But actually, immediately after the procedure is uh, completed, we can see if we can have a very good idea if we've been successful. And as far as being a cost-effective procedure, do you find any significant savings in doing this uh, procedure as opposed to uh, the uh, old methodology? Yeah, I mean, if you look at surgery and radiation, they're extremely costly procedures to the healthcare system. The devices for proton beam therapy are millions of dollars. Da Vinci robot for radical prostatectomy, also millions of dollars of cost. Operative costs, personnel costs are very, very high. And the problem with those treatments is that morbidity, that you, there's a very high risk for side effects, and then you have to treat the side effects, and that's a real burden on the healthcare system. Here we have a treatment that's not as uh, expensive. It can be done in, it's done inside the MRI, but you can do it in an outpatient center. You don't have to do it in a hospital. I use just local anesthetic and oral Valium, so you don't have to put the patient under general anesthesia. And, uh, and they don't suffer all those side effects and then need the follow-up treatment. So for, it's a, it's for the healthcare system, it's a no-brainer. It really uh, could benefit from a dollar standpoint. Let's talk about some of the, the psychological aspects as it uh, pertains to the, to the patient. You've talked about uh, counseling with them in, in several uh, short and long sessions. When it comes to the education of the patient of this new technology, do you find a, an immediate uh, level of trust and understanding, or do you find that uh, it's sometimes a challenge getting someone who may have been misdiagnosed and going through some, some uh, problems uh, once they do find your door, to be, you know, completely uh, jump on board with this new technology. Yeah, look, when, when a person's first diagnosed with cancer, any type of cancer, including prostate cancer, it's a very, very scary time for them. There's a tremendous amount of stress. And then prostate cancer in particular has a tremendous amount of information out there and available uh, treatments that are aggressively marketed by these very big companies. And people get very, very scared and are afraid, of course, of losing their the ability to be intimate with their loved ones. And um, it, it's a scary time. So I'm able to sit down with them and, and show them real, very, very good uh, avenues they can take to maintain their quality of life, keep their life as, as it was, uh, be able to have uh, sexual, maintain sexual activity and their, maintain their integrity in terms of not feeling concerned about losing their um, control over their urine flow. Uh, these are all major concerns. And, and really just talking to them and listening to them is one of the things I really do. It's a, it's a very stressful time, and they end up walking away feeling very relaxed and comforted and knowing that there's a lot of hope and there's a lot of good options for them out there, including what we do and, and some other people that I work with as well. And where can our listeners go and get some information about the Sperling Prostate Center? Well, I, uh, I encourage them to go to www.sperlingprostatecenter.com. Uh, we've got hundreds of articles on there that I've written and many other resources as well. And uh, it really is a wealth of information, and it should be very helpful for most people looking into this. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in studio with Dr. Dan Sperling, Medical Director of the Sperling Prostate Center, in studio discussing focal laser ablation using the Blue Laser Protocol for treatment of prostate cancer. It's been great having you here with us today, Dan. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank very you. happy to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.